Hey y'all, it's my review from Merit to Medicine, episodes 11 and 12. So usually I do my reviews on the second watch. For this one, um, I haven't seen both of these episodes, so y'all are gonna get my authentic reaction to it. And, you know, as always, whenever they give the theme song, I gotta participate. So with that, hit it. <laughs> So we open up with our usual montage, and it seems like the main theme for this event will be Phaedra's birthday party for Aiden, her first son, who's turning 13. Remember like we saw when Phaedra was lying about her pregnancy? Oh man, time be flying. So then the party planner's like, oh yeah, they'll run you 70K. Phaedra's like, okay. <laughs> Do y'all think Phaedra got 70K just to drop? I don't know. I mean, look, th those Bravo checks keep coming her way. Oh my God. So then we see Sweet T as Dr. Heavenly's patient. She says Gregory has the card. And in heavenly fashion, of course she brings up Quad saying Quad had the cards. She just cannot keep that woman's name out her mouth. So next scene we're with Eugene and Toya, and Eugene, you know, bless his soul, is again trying to please his thankless wife with a lovely date. This time they go to a flower shop, and he's not just buying her flowers, they're gonna make an arrangement together. He's a good man, Savannah. We cut to Toya's confessional with Eugene sitting beside her. She's saying that she's gonna try to take Simone's advice about not being so hard to please. And Eugene says, well, you are kind of hard to please. But again, she's lucky that that man loves her. I hope she sees that the watching is back to never take him for granted. So then they're talking about Damon's event that's coming up, and Toya mentions that since Quad is left, that the ladies have really been a delight to be around. Well, the group in general has been a delight to be around. I mean, I enjoy Married to Medicine with or without Quad, but I really wish she would have just humbled herself and took some accountability to the ladies, and she would probably still be on the show. Because all she had to do was apologize. I mean, look what they put up with Heavenly. Heavenly ass should have been off the show or, or kicked off by the other ladies. So next scene, we're at Dr. Damon's Mixer, and look at Heavenly. Okay, girl. I mean, the dress, I don't mind it. It's walking the fine line of tacky, but she is cinched. The girls are like out. Look at her. Like, it's heavily on Ozempic. So the ladies are arriving, and we have another cameo by Dr. Jackie's husband, Curtis. He actually came to this event. Ha <laughs> ha! So when the ladies see uh, Dr. Heavenly in this getup that I just commented on, they said, oh, they cut to Dr. Simone's confessional and she said she can immediately tell that Phaedra dressed her. And you know what? This is something that Phaedra will wear. Like she called it. And then we see a flashback of Phaedra helping out Heavenly. Oh man, they clowning her. They said her dress too small. I mean, look, I was trying to be nice, but hey, I I'll let them roast her. I'll allow it. I will say though, if Dr. Damon Daddy didn't like what she had on, he probably wouldn't have let her wear it. So Phaedra arrives and we see that she is on the prowl. And I'm looking at the selection of men and I ain't mad at it. So the event is moving along and as Damon is speaking on the mic and Heavenly is next to him, I don't think she realized that a little bit of her nipple is showing cause they definitely have it blurred on here. Now, wait a minute, what is the purpose of this event? Because then Heavenly gets on the mic, asks Phaedra to come on stage and says, are there any eligible men in the room for Phaedra? And she has opened the floor and there are some men that are volunteering. Like I could see if there was like an auction for a date for charity, but it's not. She's just doing this on the mic. The other ladies are stunned and are calling Heavenly a pimp. So then we have Simone having a discussion with Alicia, just saying how her husband is doing since he never had the kids by himself before when she went to Napa. She said he has a newfound respect for it because obviously it's harder than it looks. And then Toya brings up how Kima, that's Dr. Alicia's husband, 
said some pretty patriarchal backwards things about like American women having too much freedom and independence. And you know, she's calling her out on that in front of all the ladies. And finally, we see Dr. Alicia in her confessional saying that, you know, there's nothing wrong with the relationship that they have. It's an ongoing conversation in their household. She's strong and independent, but she does let her man be a king in the household. It's 2024, the gender roles and stereotypes are pretty outdated to me, but again, I'm not in a straight relationship, so y'all let me know what y'all think about that. So then a little later, the men join the ladies in conversation, and the topic is the couple's trip, and they're coming on their 10-year anniversary. We get a flashback of the couple's trips that went well and not so well. I think the Barbados trip was like a really good one, like everybody was fighting. But then, you know, as they're celebrating, Simone and Cecil said they'll be facilitating the upcoming couple's trip. And this time it's going to be in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Now, it's a little bit of a record scratch for Jackie because, look, I forgot about this, but that's when she found out her husband Curtis was cheating. Now, I'm kind of surprised Simone would overlook that information, being that Jackie has been her bestie for years. Like, was this done on purpose? Because this is like heavenly behavior. I wouldn't expect this out of Simone. So then Heavenly, with her nipple out, immediately interjects and asks Simone, did you check with Jackie? And Simone, we cut to her confessional, and she said it completely slipped her mind that that's where Curtis got caught cheating. After Heavenly calls out Simone, I think Simone clocked that it's starting to look like she's trying to be messy, and she makes it known to the group that she would never try to be messy in this situation, and she honestly forgot. So then she asked Jackie how she feels about it, and she said, well, I'd rather go to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Toya interjects and said, oh, well, she'd rather go to the ghetto? Oh, my. Okay, so my South Carolina followers, let me know, is Myrtle Beach the ghetto? Are you offended by what Toya just said? Heavenly looks like she's pissed at Simone now and asking her for some, like, compassion. But Simone says the hotel is already booked. Uh, I think they probably could have changed it. I mean, they working with the Bravo budget. They ain't paying for it. I mean, unless they're going in the next two days, I don't see why they couldn't change it. And in South Carolina, of all places, to celebrate the 10-year anniversary? Really? South Carolina? Can we use a passport? From Jackie's response, it seemed like she might not go. And then they ask her what Curtis mind, and she says, I don't know. So next scene, we're in Jackie's household now, and Curtis is there. This is the most I've seen Curtis this season. So she's telling him that, you know, the couple's trip's gonna be in Hilton Head. And Jackie, I guess after thinking about it, she wants to go this time. But she just sees, like, where his mindset is. He says he has to go to the DR again. Now, does anybody know why he's in the DR so much? I'm sure it's work-related, but remind me in the chat. I forgot. Jackie's hoping that he'll be able to make it, and if he does, she's telling him that, you know, some things may be said, so just be prepared for that. But she lets him know that I am not phased by what anyone else can say. Curtis is being very adamant when he says, like, my business is my business. Jackie reminds him that, you know, our business is our business. And, you know, this trip will not be at the expense of us. We'll see what happens and how that goes, if they go. After this conversation, it just seems like a maybe for them if they're going to go or not. So next scene, we're at Phaedra's son's Aiden's birthday, and Phaedra pulled all the stops. Like $70,000 definitely looked like it went into this party. I mean, seeing how Phaedra's baby shower was, or was it the christening? Candy called it Bougetto, but I'm just not surprised like how much she went out for Aiden's birthday party. Oh my God, look at Dwight. <laughs> Talk about waking the dead. He is still with us. Dwight looked good. Look at Dwight. And I'm glad they're still friends after all these years. What is Phaedra wearing? Oh, this is nice. Phaedra really put on an event. I mean, we could call Phaedra a lot of things. A liar, a felon, a cheat, a scammer, a treacherous woman, vile. But one thing we do know, we can all agree on, that she is a great mom to her kids. So we see Toy bringing up a good point, asking, where is Apollo? I, I am wondering, why isn't he there? So we get a little cameo from Cecil's brother, 
who is, I will say, um, easy on the eyes, like a, a nice looking cat daddy. And he's not wearing a ring. And Heavenly definitely points it out. And he's sitting next to Phaedra and I, I can see it. And not Heavenly handing him $100 to tell him to buy a ring. Wow, he looks about as tall as I am. Oh God, so we see Kima, Dr. Alicia's husband, talking to Greg. And, you know, they're bonding off of their, their old gender role stereotypes for women. Saying that, yeah, I love that our wives take care of us. And, you know, all I got to do is bring home the bacon. She do what I say. <sighs> Next. So then later we see Heavenly pressing Simone about why did she choose Hilton Head of all places? And why can't she change it? We got to Simone's confessional and she doesn't appreciate Heavenly trying to paint this picture of her being messy. But this is interrupted because it's time to do the cake cutting. And then we cut to Phaedra them looking back on raising Aiden. And of course he grew up in front of us. So they have like all the different instances, like his first birthday where Dwight was there. And Dwight is now at his 13th birthday. Oh man, they about to get me. Aiden is talking to his mom. She raised that boy right. Mm -mm -mm. A treacherous woman too. That is so sweet. I'm getting a little misty eye. Uh-oh, so it looks like Jackie arrives to the party. Heavenly says she wants to talk to Simone again and they bring Jackie in on this conversation. Heavenly again asks Simone, do you think that was a good idea? But Simone ignores her and asks Jackie, are you comfortable becoming the Hilton head? And Jackie, she just says that Curtis isn't gonna come. Like, we just don't want to open up that can of worms. But Heavenly, she keeps interjecting. And Simone, she's keeping her cool. Y'all know Simone be ready to pop off. Simone then calmly tells Jackie, you better tell your bulldog to shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, they're now going back and forth because Heavenly said, you should have known that. Simone's like, I've been friends with her for 20 years. And then Heavenly, she grabs Jackie. Like, she's the better friend. And she's kind of rubbing it in Simone's face. She knows what she's doing. And just looking at this, I can see how Simone is about to really erupt on Heavenly. Because just imagine that you've been friends with somebody for 20 years. And here comes this person that you don't fuck with, that you just tolerate, uh, that's friends with your best friend. But then they're trying to act like they're the best friend. Oh, that would get me. That would get me so good because I take friendships so seriously. And the one thing that'll piss me off is someone saying that I'm not being a good friend. They're getting really loud now and people are looking at them. I think they need to realize that this is not the time or place for this conversation. Jackie just walks away. So then Simone and Heavenly, they continue this conversation like away from the party near the entrance. But those two get really loud, like at certain decibels. So people will hear them regardless. I want to know though, why is Heavenly more angry than Jackie is? They get into each other's face right now. I think someone needs to intervene. Because Heavenly has a mouth on her, but I don't think she know how to fight. Simone would beat her ass. So Jackie comes back outside to calm the situation down. And it looks like she's not going to go if Curtis doesn't go. But then it looks like they're at a maybe. I can't wait to get to the next episode to see if they just decide to go or not. Or they're just going to change the entire trip. Simone then gives Heavenly a warning. Do not come for me again. I would love to know what y'all think of this back and forth beef. Whose side are y'all on? I think Heavenly is trying to toot her chest up too high and try to speak for Jackie when Jackie can definitely speak for herself, especially to her friend of 20 years. So the arguing stops between the two and Heavenly has the nerve to ask Simone for a hug. If I was Simone, I probably would have told Heavenly, you luck I didn't lay your ass out at a kid's birthday party. So next scene, we see everyone packing for the trip to Hilton Head. It looks like Jackie is going without Curtis, but Simone's gonna give her the master bedroom. So the credits are rolling and we see Simone telling Cecil how excited she is for the trip. Then we cut to 24 hours later. And you know, we see all hell break loose. It looked like Jackie and Curtis aren't going on the trip. And yeah, we fade to black and that is where the episode ends. Let's get to episode 12 because I need to see like, are they going to this damn trip or not? 
So the episode opens with all the couples meeting at Simone and Cecil's house. Oh, child, every time I hear this Kima person speaks, like, I want a piano to fall on him. He always got something ignorant and chauvinist to say, and I don't think it's cute, like the other ladies do. He always has something misogynist or chauvinist to say, and I'm over him. So then Simone is wondering where the rest of the ladies are. Heavenly, Phaedra, and Jackie, they're still not there. So Simone calls Heavenly first, and she says, I'm not coming. Even if you felt that way, Heavenly, that is extremely rude. She has her on speaker right now, and she's saying that it looks like Kurt is not going, so, you know, I don't feel comfortable with this. I'm not going. You choose to tell her the day of the trip when they're about to leave? So then they call Jackie, who also says she's not coming because it looks like Curtis changed his mind at the last minute. Toy is trying to intervene, saying, Jackie, nobody gonna bring nothing up. But Jackie sounds like it's a done deal. Uh, she says she doesn't want to talk. And then she says she has to go, but they look like she's about to cry, and she hangs up. So now that's two people that's not going? In the grand scheme of things, though, y'all, like, is it really that big of a deal if it comes up? Is it that taboo of a topic? Because, I mean, Sweet Tea hasn't said this yet, but I saw it in the preview that, I mean, they put her through the ringer, brought the ex-wife to her bachelorette party, but Jackie doesn't want to just talk about, like, when Curtis cheated on her, doesn't even know if they're even going to bring it up. But this is just all this hoopla over that? So it looks like they're all continuing things as planned. They're loading up, and here comes Phaedra strolling up one hour late. So as they're headed to Hilton Head on the Sprinter, they're all talking about how Heavenly and Jackie choosing not to go. And then Toya brings up a good point, the hypocrisy of Heavenly to stay behind with Jackie when we rewind a few years on the couple's trip and it was Heavenly who was judging everybody's marriages, and especially Jackie's when she brought up a messy question. So yeah, I agree. Heavenly's full of shit. So now the couples are just playing games to pass the time by, and you know, they're messing with Kima because they know he's a male chauvinist, and they're asking top three things to put Kima to bed or whatever. But then the topic of oral sex comes up, and he says they don't do that. What? He hasn't performed it on her, of course, but she doesn't even do it on him either. They just don't do oral sex, period. That is insane. I, I wonder why. Can And he said it's culturally. So he's Nigerian, right? Can somebody enlighten me? Uh, like, why? Why? Oral sex, I think, well, I'm going to just speak for myself. It is very important. It is a deal breaker. And I enjoy both forms of oral sex, one more than the other, but that's Chris's business. We cut to his confessional. He's talking about how taboo it is in his culture, but we saw Phaedra saying, well, the one I knew didn't care. Then he's saying, well, if it's something that she wants and head over heels for, maybe I'll consider it, but that's not her thing. She then says, well, you, you can probably go down there more. Oh man, where, where they find these people? Anywho, they arrive at Hilton Head, and by the looks of it, it looks like something Gen X would enjoy, like someone in their 50s and up. So the couples are getting situated, about to have dinner outside, and then here comes a car pulling up, and Jackie and Curtis gets out, and behind them is Heavenly and Damon. Is production playing games with us right now? Were they always gonna go, but they're just trying to create this drama? So I'm not sure if they want to just surprise everybody or be dramatic, but we cut to the other couples besides Simone and Cecil, and they're just like, um, okay. Like, did they think they were better than us because they came separately? Like, they couldn't just come with us? I want the behind the scenes tea because I'm pretty sure production forced their ass to go. We cut to Jackie and Curtis' confessional, and they said they weighed the good and the bad, and Curtis felt like he didn't want to make this about him, so he decided to go. The more I hear them talk about it, it just seemed like they're making it a bigger deal than what it really is. So they're all sitting at the table now, and then Toya asks Heavenly, like, what's the deal? Like, why did you decide not to come? And Heavenly was like, well, if Jackie wasn't coming, I wasn't going. And I think it's pretty fucked up that y'all decided to have this here. Oh, so there's still tension either way, and they're still talking about it on the trip. 
So why did they do all the theatrics? I don't know y'all, toys kind of sway me because if they would have never made a big deal about it, then nobody would have brought it up. And if they did, it probably would have just been like, oh, well, Jackie, how do you feel being that, you know, you're here, you know? And it would have just been done. But then Jackie tries to put a pin in it and says, well, we can just leave it there. But then Sweet T speaks up and says, well, you know, I don't think it was fair that y'all brought up Quad, but y'all still did it. Do y'all think Sweet T has a point? I, I kind of think she does too. So Jackie tells Sweet T condescendingly, do you need me to feel uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Tea says, no, but I think you should be in the hot seat. And then Jackie says, well, I'm so well equipped to be in the hot seat. And ooh-wee. I mean, present day, we talking about hot seats. That's going to be a very interesting reunion. Like, just the, the irony of that statement. Damn, Jackie just fell into a soliloquy talking to Sweet Tea. I'm in the hot seat every day when I'm in the OR. I'm in the hot seat every time I deliver a baby that, you know, knowing I can't have one, etc. So then we have the two husbands stepping in on what they think about it. Like, Greg, he says, well, it's all ha 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 he he until you're in the hot seat. And then Curtis is like, well, we're not about to get into this. We didn't come here for that. We came here to hang out with our friends. Sir, you are on a reality show. Y'all know what y'all signed up for. 10 years into, you already did this, girl. That's a Drag Race reference. This is probably the wrong audience to use that for. We got the Sweet Tea's confessional. She's like, well, Jackie may be the matriarch of this group, but she ain't my mama and Curtis ain't my daddy. They are old enough to be her grandparents. Simone then takes the conversation and addresses Jackie saying that it's just me and you talking right now. Nobody at this table fucking matters. If it wasn't for you, me and Cecil would be together for 26 or 27 years. For someone to think that I would plan this trip for the sole purpose of reopening the wound, it's fucked up. I believe Simone, and again, like, all they had to do was just go on the trip. Like, nobody would have said it. They're the ones that highlighted it and made it a big deal to begin with. Simone says in her confessional that Heavenly's accusation is the dumbest thing she's heard in 10 or 9 years that come through her dentures. And here we go, Simone versus Heavenly Part 2. Heavenly's trying to defend herself, saying she never said she did it on purpose. Simone has had it with her. She's like, no one is talking to you. No one gives a fuck about you. And she's, she's getting loud. And they're going back and forth now. Heavenly then calls Simone a hating ass bitch. They're getting loud to the point where random neighbors walking through, uh, we see them on their phones recording them. Child looks like the white folks started complaining, so they go inside before somebody called the police in the neighborhood. So they're all inside now. The mood is pretty awkward. We cut to Phaedra's confessional, and it seems like the consensus is that Jackie is using Heavenly as her mouthpiece so she don't have to get involved. So they continue this conversation inside, and Eugene asks them, so you considered us that untrustworthy to the point that you thought we would bring up your old history at this place. That's why you didn't come. I think what the other couples are harping on now is they're offended that Curtis and Jackie would even think that they would bring up Curtis's cheating on this trip. So then Jackie gives a flippant response. And you know, this kind of mirrors present day. Like her first apology to, you know, what she said about black mothers. It was flippant and the wrong apology. And we're going back here where she says, well, if, if everyone quits being selfish, like it's not about y'all. But then Sweet Tea interjects again and says, well, you made fun of my situation. So why should I have empathy for you? Here go Jackie again, condescendingly talking to Sweet Tea, calls her baby girl. Like, you know, trying to sun her. So then Sweet T, she's like, fuck you? And I think called her a bitch. Everyone is silent. We got to Phaedra's confession. She's like, this woman can be your mom for real. Okay, so we cut to Heavenly's confessional right quick. And I caught what she said about Phaedra saying that, well, Phaedra fucked her man. She didn't care what Jackie say. Like, come on now. Heavenly, that's why Phaedra's gonna get up in your ass at the reunion. But anyway, Jackie wants to put a pin in the argument. She says she'll handle Sweet Tea or Baby Girl later. And here go Heavenly again. Like, always bringing up Quad. No one said Quad on this trip. Like, she always brings that up when she's trying to slice Sweet Tea. And I'm really tired of it. And I see why Sweet Tea has it on site for you. 
And this is just the first day. The first day. How is this going to go? So they end the night without anyone being killed. And Simone is hoping that Sweet Tea will apologize to Jackie for cussing her out as well as calling her a bitch. We then see Sweet Tea talking to Greg and Greg's trying to figure out like what's going on with her. Like why did she blow up on Jackie? And she said that, you know, she's just been harboring feelings and she's been doing this to protect him. So then it's the next day, we see Heavenly goes to Simone's room and she gives her the best heartfelt apology she can give and Simone begrudgingly accepts her apology. So the activities for the day, uh, the men and the women are split up. The men are gonna be doing a cooking class while the ladies this time will be going to play golf. Oh uh, God, we're with the men right now. I wanna fast forward, but we only got four minutes left, it's fine. But of course, you know, Kima says this is women's work as he's headed to a cooking class. Side note, I cannot wait to watch Erica De Niro's review of this because I know she's going to eviscerate Dr. Alicia's husband. I know she is and I can't wait. So now we're back on the Lady Sprinter and Sweet Tea takes this time to apologize to Jackie. And Jackie, it sounded like she was accepting the apology, but then she said something where it was like, did she accept it? All I know is uh, present day has definitely humbled Dr. Jackie. So I cannot wait to see the reunion. We cut to a few of the other ladies' confessionals, and it looks like they laughing at the fact that Jackie might never forgive Sweet Tea because it looks like Jackie must hold grudges. So the credits are rolling, and as Jackie's talking to Sweet Tea, uh, we cut to Simone's confessional, and she breaks it down for the audience. Jackie's letting Sweet Tea know in her own way that she won't be fucking with her anymore. And that is where the episode ends. I actually really enjoyed this episode. I think that even though Quad is gone, I'm still entertaining it. Uh, we got some really good drama. And I would love to know y'all's opinion on whether they should have went to Hilton Head or not. Like, are you on uh, Heavenly Side or Simone? But decent episode. I I'm looking forward to the next one. So with that, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see y'all for the next episode. Oh, February 18th, by the way. <laughs> okay, bye.